Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at the ways you can fix or at least work around the issues that I consider to be the biggest problems with Windows 11. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Thrott. This week, I wanted to talk about what we call insurtification for the family friendly version of the word. Um, those issues that uh, are in Windows that impact us as users and are there because Microsoft has some kind of strategic business case need to do things that are negative to us. <laughs> and it's it's a strange situation, but it's fair to say that um, there's always been some bad things in Windows, like in most personal technology products, but that it's gotten worse over the years. Windows 8 introduced advertising. Uh, Windows 10 introduced uh, non-disablable uh, telemetry, tracking, you know, that kind of stuff. And in Windows 11, Microsoft has really escalated this. So if you watch Windows Weekly, we've talked about this a lot. You're probably quite familiar with this. But recently, I decided to sort of formally list out what these issues are, uh, you know, provide them with uh, ratings of severity in each case. And uh, of course, you know, as part of my job, you know, try to figure out ways that you can fix these problems, right? And uh, in some cases, you can fix them literally, which is always great. In some ways, in some cases, you have to work around them. And then in some cases, it's like, eh, you know, it's not much you can do. So we'll take a look and uh, we'll see what we can do. So first, I want to look at the issues that I consider to be the most major, the most horrible issues in Windows 11. And there are three of them, two of them related to Microsoft Edge, one of them related to OneDrive. If you watch the last video, um, I talked about apps that I remove or, or at least uh, replace in Windows 11, and those two are right at the top. And this this is why <laughs> it's because of some of the terrible, you know, terrible, terrible behavior that they exhibit, um, no matter how you configure them. So to show you what I mean, let's uh, actually let me use open up settings. And I will make Chrome the default browser on this system. I'm not even sure why there is a default apps interface anymore, but here it is. You can set it as the default. And what that does is it changes two of the uh, file types, uh, HTML and HTML, and then two of the protocols, HTTP and HTTPS, to Chrome. And so there's some other things in here that are still tied up with uh, Microsoft Edge, but not a big deal. We could go through this whole list and and manually change everything to Chrome, that doesn't really matter and it doesn't impact what I'm about to show you. So now that I've done that, if I go into widgets and I click on a story, it opens an edge, <laughs> which I just, I, and it's complaining because it's not the default browser, but I just set Chrome as the default, right? And this is the thing. So uh, uh, the widgets articles, the uh, items that are here in uh, search highlights, Copilot, they all launch an edge. So there's no way to fix this in the system, but you can download third-party utilities that can help you work around this. The problem with this type of thing is that Microsoft actively works to thwart these things. So sometimes uh, they might get cut off and won't work for a little while or whatever. This one is called MS Edge Redirect. It's This is an updated version of an old utility that in fact got cut off by Microsoft, um, but it works now and it works well. I, I'm I find this Europe mode to be humorous, by the way, because if you live in the European economic area, Microsoft's been forced by the Digital Markets Act law to allow users to bypass Edge, which we can't do here in the United States or elsewhere in the world. So, but we can use this third party utility. So I'm going to enable this. And you're going to want to look at these options. I want this to take over for all of the stuff that I would you know, use with a browser, but I'm, what I'm really concerned, I'm not worried about the PDFs and stuff like that. Um, I can't have it be used for Copilot. So you can disable Copilot, um, but you can't have Copilot use Chrome or any other browser. That's the one exception, the one big exception anyway. And so I will accept those settings like that. Now I should have this app in there. Okay, now if I go into um, the same article this time, this time it opens in Chrome, right? Which is what you would expect, right? Um, 
except that it came up not with the article, but rather with a search because everything is terrible. But that's uh, just an example of I, I don't want edge running, <laughs> right? Um, don't forget if you are going to use another browser as a default, even whether you use a utility like that or not, uh, to disable uh, edge from auto starting. Uh, when the system boots up, I've already, I think it's already done on the system, if I'm not mistaken, but um, be sure to do that. Um, if you do choose to use Edge, you should also think about configuring the browser in a way that makes sense for you. The, the problem with that is that it is still exhibits those bad behaviors, right? So I took a picture here, which so you can see it in a screenshot. Here, what I've done is I've customized this default new tab page, the Microsoft Start page. It usually has all these horrible news stories and links and all kinds of busy stuff going on. And I like a more minimalist kind of a look. So I changed it. And Microsoft doesn't like that because when I turn that stuff off, I'm not putting myself in front of their online services and I'm not clicking on things and not going and getting ads served that they make money from. So they will harass you like this. And I, this kind of behavior is, you know, the reason why in the previous um, episode, I, one of the reasons why I recommend kind of turning this off. It's, it's just too bad um, that it works this way. Um, OneDrive does something very similar. Like uh, if you, the only thing I can really show you here, because I have used, I'm using other, uh, another uh, service instead of OneDrive for cloud storage. I'm using Google um, Drive. But when I go into a folder that it wants to back up, you get this little start backup prompt up here. And every once in a while, it will, it will give you a little message. Hey, you should do this. You should turn this on. If you install a Windows update and reboot your computer, you'll see a screen that comes up that says, hey, do you want to make some configuration changes? And one of those changes will be enabling folder backup. Um, you can say no. And you can say no, and you can say no. And in my case, at least, and in many other people's cases, it will just silently enable itself in the background. So to protect myself from that, what I did was I created uh, my own folder. I just call it Paul in OneDrive. And I moved all my content out of the normal folders that OneDrive uses and wants to back up. So I have my own little folder structure in here. And um, this is, I actually still use OneDrive. I use it mostly for archiving at this point, but I have documents and, you know, all my photos are in here and videos and so forth. But I I just don't want folder backup to be enabled on some computer because what happens is you get something like this, where these things were in a local folder. It enabled folder backup. I, I didn't want it to. And now this thing is syncing up to the cloud. I just left it here as a reminder of how terrible this thing is. But this is why I do that kind of thing. So Edge and OneDrive together, whether you use them or not, <laughs> can be terrible. It's it's really kind of interesting. Uh, OneDrive, at least you can disable, you can uninstall. Um, Edge, you can't, I mean, outside of Europe, it re you really kind of can't, um, but you can do what you can do, like I said, to kind of minimize what it can do. If you do want to use Copilot in Windows, you're you're stuck using Edge. That's just the, the way it is. Um, in the medium severity category, I only have one item, and some people might actually put this up in the major category, and that's the updates. Um, Windows 11 is updated all the time now. Uh, Microsoft talks about how they have one annual feature update, capital F, capital U there, but the reality is they also have quarterly update bundles called Moments. We just had one this past week as I record this video. And they also have monthly updates of new features that could come at any time in the month, sometimes on Patch Tuesday, sometimes at other times. And you really can't turn this off. You could pause updates. This is not a good idea, frankly. Um, but you can't really disable this behavior. The, the things you can do are, A, don't turn this thing on, right? You don't want the latest updates because that's going to give you even more updates. You'll get preview versions of updates the month before they're released publicly. And then if you go into advanced options, you just want to make sure that you're not receiving any of this stuff. You don't want updates from other Microsoft products. Um, you might want to, in fact, it's not a horrible idea that you are prompted to reboot rather than have the system just reboot, just in case you don't want to lose data. Um, although that type of thing is not as horrible as it used to be. Um, you can adjust your active hours. Um, you don't want this thing trying to reboot while you're working, right? So if you work odd hours, you work late into the night, you might want to change that schedule. Nine to nine for me is actually pretty good. Um, and that's about it, <laughs> right? This, this is one of those ones where 
you, you can't actually, well, I'm sorry, that's not technically true. You could fix it. You could use a service like an XDNS or a VPN or something. And um, if you're lucky enough to have Windows 11 Enterprise, there's a registry change you can make, to, or rather a group policy change you can make that would uh, disable that. But it, it's, you don't want to do that, right? It's just, it's just not worth it. So unfortunately, the irregularity and unreliability and sporadic nature of these updates is just something we kind of live with um, as Windows users. So I have a few more issues. The good news is that the rest of these, I consider these to be minor. Um, you, your opinions may vary, um, but on this list are such things as the forced telemetry, right? This is where Microsoft sends what they call diagnostic data uh, to Redmond from your computer, right? Because they're trying to uh, make sure that they understand what's going on in the system. And then if they see multiple people having the same problem, um, they can fix those bugs. That's the theory. <laughs> so um, there is a, a, a required set of data that you have to send to Microsoft. Um, you can optionally, if you feel like really helping them out, let them track you around the internet, uh, turn on optional diagnostic data. I strongly recommend not turning this on because this is really about learning more about how you use your computer and is part of their efforts to track you online, which is another reason I'm not a big fan of Microsoft Edge because that plays a role in that as well. So the only thing you can really do here of any substance is just make sure you're only sending the, the required bit. And this is something I got to be honest. I don't, I don't worry about this at all. Personally, I don't, I don't mind sending telemetry data. It's okay. Um, this is a clean computer, right? There's no junk here, but when you get a new computer, it has crapware right in the start menu. Some of it is actually installed. Some of it is just stubs. Um, for th things like Spotify or Grammarly, it changes from time to time, but there's probably five or seven of these things. Um, there are ways to prevent that from happening. They're, they're invasive, right? You could use a tool like Tiny11 to create a custom installation, uh, USB media, and yeah, that would get rid of this kind of stuff. But it's not hard to just right click and uninstall or unpin, depending on the app. Uh, and do that for the five or seven that you don't want there. It's This is not a big deal. Most people don't change computers a lot or update computers a lot or get new computers a lot. So it, it's really not something that's going to impact you all that often. It's it's annoying and silly, but it's not a big, big deal. And I, I do this all the time. I have new computers coming through here regularly, and I, it it doesn't bother me that much. This is not, to me, is not a, not a big deal. But you can get around it if you want to. And then the final uh, couple are related. So I'll kind of put them together. And this is the forced Microsoft account sign-in, which is now true of Windows 11 Home and Pro with the latest versions of Windows 11. And then the arbitrary hardware requirements, right? Which is basically you have a an eighth gen Intel core processor or newer will work. It has to have TPM2 and enabled. Uh, if you don't, you can't upgrade or install Windows 11. Um, these are the types of things that freak out people who are power users. Um, but I don't see why. First of all, this doesn't impact too many people. Um, secondly, you're a power user. You can work around this. And there's a lot of ways to do it. I, I In the Windows 11 field guide and earlier on this podcast and in an earlier episode, I would have documented um, some of the ways you can do that. But the simplest thing that you can do is just to use Rufus to create install installation media. So I've downloaded the Windows 11 ISO from Microsoft.com. And I've selected it. I have a USB uh, key in there and I can start this process and you get this little dialog here. And this is nice because you can, the first one is about removing the hardware requirements, which honestly is not going to impact it, most of you anyway. It removes the requirement for a Microsoft account, which is great. Um, you could create a local account. I've been experimenting with that lately. I don't recommend that. I would do that during the process. It, it, that cuts out some steps of settings and makes it go a little faster, but it, I think it's better to step through some of that and make explicit choices. And then it says disable data collection, but you don't want to skip the privacy questions. You actually want to answer those. So that's where you say, um, uh, yeah, don't, I'm not sending you extra data for, um, you know, for the telemetry data or I'm not, you know, I, I do or do not want my location data shared, et cetera, et cetera. It's, I think it's, don't disable that. You want to step through and choose the ones you want and the ones you don't want, et cetera. So I would say for most people, I would just leave this as it is. I mean, I don't think you even need that top one, but this, the point here is that you can get around the Microsoft account sign-in requirement and, or the arbitrary hardware requirements, just 
by making the installation media a different way. It's easy. So anyone can do this. Rufus is free. The ISO is free. Very easy. You're a power user. You got this. So the good news here, I think, is that most of the issues that I've listed are minor, at least to my opinion. Um, some of the issues that I think are major might not bother you, right? You may love OneDrive and you love uh, folder backup and you don't have a problem with that. So great. You can just use that. It works well. If you if you don't mind that stuff, it does. It works great. Um, I have run into Microsoft Edge fans who don't understand why I hate Edge so much. Um, you know, privacy mostly and uh, annoying, you know, being harassed all the time I, is my answer. But but if you love it, that's fine. You can use it. It's not a problem. So it's this list will be different for different people. But uh, for the most part, you can fix a workaround. I would say most of the major issues in Windows 11. The one exception being that update issue, which is something I really, really want to see them fix. Um, but for now, it's just something we have to live with. So hopefully this was useful and uh, educational. <laughs> um, I can't, no promises, I guess. But um, thank you for watching. We'll have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.tv slash HOW. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you especially to club Twit members. We love you and we appreciate you. I'll see you next week.